The question that I want you to ask yourself is, who is in charge of my life? Who is it, really, that is in charge of your life right now? Who is it that has made all these decisions? Why have you made the decisions you made today? Why have you chosen the relationships that you've chosen? Why have you ended up working where you are working right now? Why are you studying what you are studying right now? Who can we blame for the problems that we have in our life? Can we look to our parents? Are our parents to blame for our issues up till now? Can we look to our teachers? Can we look to our society, our city, our culture, our government? The most important question that I believe that you can ask yourself is who is in charge? In general, who is in charge of all of this? Who is it that we can blame for the way things are today? I believe that there is a fascinating conclusion to this question. Truth is, I've thought about it and I've found it out. I know now who is in charge. Nobody. There is nobody in charge of today's society. There is no God. Or if he is, he is largely absent in our decisions and in our lives. There is no uh, leader that is in charge and that is making decisions for us. No. Something has happened. We've gotten to a point where we are leaderless. We are like headless chicken flapping around. Yeah, what I've found is that we are all so busy looking at each other's to decide for each other's. We are people, ants, all looking to each other's, all looking at where are we supposed to go. And we can't even decide. It's as simple as trying to go to dinner with your friends. Everyone is looking at each other's. What do you want to go eat? Where do you want to go? I don't know. Where do you want to go? <laughs> and that is the circle of power. In now, speaking about approval, I could really use some likes. So if you want to give me a few likes, if you want to hit subscribe, please click the big red button below. You can't miss it. Thank you all and enjoy the rest of the video. And so, if you're wondering why there is so many mad, crazy, chaotic events that are happening in the world today, don't look for a global conspiracy. Don't look for a new world order. There is no they incorporated that have been secretly behind everything that has been happening up until now. There is no global organization that is single-handedly pulling all the strings in our society, deciding everything that is happening. No. There is instead a new world disorder. There is no new world order. There is a new world disorder. What we are ending up with today is a society without uh, patriarchy, without any form of uh, government, without any form of system of rule. We are not a democracy. We are not a fascist state. We are not a communist utopia or dystopia. We are purely people making random decisions, looking at each other's, looking for leadership from each other's. Yeah, we are all headless chicken. So, who is in charge of your life? Ultimately, you have been making every single decision up until this point. You've done everything that you did yourself. Every choice you made, every action you took, you took. Sure. There might have been driving factors. There might have been feelings behind there. There might have been experiences that shaped your thoughts and beliefs. There might have been people pressuring you. There might have been worries, insecurities, fears. There might have been necessities struggles, issues, things that were beyond your control. But you have been making all the decisions. You have been taking all the actions. Up until this point, you've been choosing to live life and to be a participant in life. Now, the question is, are you a hero? 
or are you an NPC? The NPC is the person that simply echoes back what other people want to hear. The NPC is the person that just goes with the flow. The NPC repeats what they've heard other people say. It's like a virus, it intrudes your mind. You read it in the media, you've seen it on the weather channel, and so it's the first thing you say. How was the weather today? Yeah, the weather was nice. Did you enjoy the rain? Did you enjoy the sun? What did you think about Kim Kardashian? We can ask ourselves all these kind of questions about our life. We can ask ourselves all kind of questions about what we're doing, what we are experiencing. But the question is, who is running our global consciousness? For those of you that are on Facebook, who is in charge of your Facebook feed? For those of you that are surfing on Reddit, who is running the algorithm that decides what you want to hear? And are they doing a good job so far? We live in a society without leaders. Sure, we have appointed leaders, but do they really lead? Did Obama make any decisions when he was in government? And the decisions he made, did he make them because he had the power to make them? Or because he was looking at other people and other people were looking at him? And eventually, they'd all written up a decision based on what they each thought from each other's that each other's wanted. Consensus is an interesting thought. I mean, we're all making decisions. We're all trying to find agreement. We're all used to seeking agreement. We want agreement more than anything, I think, today. I think we've found a way past a lot of the old wars, a lot of the old conflicts, a lot of the old power struggles of our past society. And it is good. It is great. We can be grateful that we have moved past the idea of violence. We can be happy that we no longer look to war and violence to solve our problems. We can be thankful that we no longer solve decisions with our fists. Yeah, we should be happy, we should be grateful for the peace that we built, and we should cherish it. But have we become addicted to it? Have we become addicted to consensus? Have we become addicted to peace? Some people, they might look at what I say and they might say, Eric, we're not at all in a peaceful society. There is more divisiveness than ever. Identity politics, people all, are all around us fighting. Men and women cannot get along. People cannot form relationships anymore. There are no more marriages. People are divorcing at unprecedented rates. There is conflicts between whites and blacks. There is racism. There are so many struggles in the world. How can you say that the world is peaceful? One thing I can say is that I think in our addiction to peace, we create a new form of war. A war that happens between the lines. A war that happens underneath the surface. The new kinds of wars, they're not fought through our fists. They're not fought even through our words. They're fought as we constantly, unconsciously negotiate with each other. Their misunderstandings, misunderstandings don't happen when we talk in between the lines. We never get the chance to really talk. We never get the chance to lay out our problems on the table. And so our problems fester, they grow. They become murky, they become toxic. Everything that you hold back, everything that you hide from your friends and family members as you strive towards political correctness, as you strive towards agreement, becomes unspoken disagreements. And everything that they hear, every single doubt, every single worry, every single unconscious word, every single thought or thing that you keep to yourself, it's still there. And the most fascinating thing that I've realized is when we do this, when we hold back our voice, when we censor ourselves, we hurt ourselves. Yeah, we're at war with ourselves. What I'm seeing is people are at war with themselves. They're holding themselves back. They're holding themselves in tight reins. We are guarding our fists. We are putting our knuckles in the pocket. 
we are sitting uh, shaking with <laughs> like really doing our best to keep our anger away to keep conflict away to keep peace here yeah we're keeping it all here and the question is have we really been able to address the issues of the past have we really been able to make a better society have we really been able to solve the conflicts of the old days have we really been able to fix the problems or did we just get better at covering them up was it that we solved the issues of the past did we find some kind of a solution that allowed people from the left from the socialists from the communists and people from the right from the liberals from the conservatives to find common ground or did we get better at hiding these conflict lines pretending they weren't there and pretending like we had hit some kind of status quo We admire ourselves in the West. We admire the strength that we have, the uh, human rights that we have developed, while relying on countries that exploit these very human rights. We built a system of privilege, while this system depends on exploitation. Are we no different from the people back in the days of nobles? The people sitting in the top of the tower, eating the luxurious uh, bread and drinking the luxurious wine while people around us starve. Are we feminists or are we human rights advocates or are we peace advocates? Do we have peace? I say this not because I want to spark argument, because I want to bring up issues, because I want to bring up conflict lines. I say this because I want people to realize an important truth. We have to speak our minds. We have to say what we feel. We have to start talking. As long as we're not talking, we sit in silence, disagreeing with each other's. We avoid each other's, we avoid conflict. We hide in comfortable bubbles where everyone thinks the same. We look to each other's desperate for somebody to agree with. We look to each other's for reassurance and validation. But because nobody is saying anything, there is no reassurance. There is no true reassurance. There is no true peace. I believe the path to peace is to start speaking out. And I believe sometimes you have to argue to find solutions, to find agreement. You have to disagree to agree. You have to compete against each other's to learn how to work together with each others. Finally, there is no system that is in charge of the issues that you're facing in your life. There is no global conspiracy holding you down. No, the people around you, the people you look up to, the authority figures that you rely on, they have no clue what they are doing and you have no reason at all to respect them. The media that we love does not exist anymore. There are few true journalists today and the ones that work in journalism rarely have the time to do journalism. There is no deep investigative journalism. There are no people competent enough to understand the proposals of smart politicians. And so there are no smart politicians. There are people all trying to make it people trying to become successful, big on YouTube, big in politics, or rich and wealthy, status seekers, popularity seekers, people are all looking for approval and we think they are powerful, but truly they have no power. They are simply surrendering to the rules of society. They're doing what the rules allow them to do. Everything they have, everything they do is because society 
and everyone around them allows them to do it. And the exploitation that we face is random, messy and disorganized. A lot of the time we want to believe that we have uh, evil people in our lives. We want to believe that there are people around us that know what they are doing. We want to believe that people that are evil are intentional in what they do. But a lot of the time they're completely unaware of what they're doing. They have no clue what they're doing. They have no idea how much they hurt you. They have no idea what the influence they have in your life. They have, they're clueless about the problems that they've caused you. And all the blame that you're holding towards them, you're holding towards a headless chicken. You're holding it towards a person who is completely lost, completely unaware, completely ignorant of the conditions that you face. And should you really respect such a person? Is there anything worth respecting about a person that knows nothing about what they're doing? Should we celebrate or look up to ignorance or stupidity or exploitation and make it anything more grandiose than what it is? Should we believe in a collective patriarchy or a collective group of people that are doing anything to hold the world down? Or should we believe in a system of clowns that are all throwing paint at each other, desperate for attention, desperate for status, desperate for approval? Should we believe in a new world order? Should we believe in random, crazy, scattered events from people that are truly just mirroring each other's, mirroring out a conflict that is happening in between the lines, a conflict that nobody dares to talk about, a conflict that is completely in our own heads. Thank you all for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video.